Perfect. Six. Tori's approach is to will himself sober. Be the car, be the car. Be the road, be the road. And while it works well initially, a sudden surprise breaks his clear record. Oh, I just killed a rat. I think the little bugger got under my tire. But he does manage to pull himself together thereafter. Now on to the three-point turn. As normal as I can be. OK, now hairpin turn and on to the parallel parking. Focus, 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 focus. Don't crash. And we're in. Bang! Tori has done surprisingly well on the maneuverability course, forfeiting only 20 penalty points. But now comes the boring part. Sobriety! Once again, Tori's progress is monitored by Grant and Paul in the chase vehicle. I don't know, call me paranoid, but I think this white van's following me. Why is he following me? Starting to get busy. And I don't think it's from the alcohol. 25 laps later, and Tori's tipsy test is finally complete. Oh my gosh, that was torturous. I never thought it was going to end. You and me both. It certainly was tedious, but how did he do? Well, in the monotonous driving course, he crossed the line four times. For a grand total of one second in danger. woo -hoo! The less than sober Tory did very well once again, bringing his final penalties to 25 points. But it's not all good news. You know, I've got to say, watching Tory drive after having had three shots of alcohol is a little disturbing. He almost didn't make any mistakes. Yeah, I think on the surface it looks like that. There were mistakes made, and those mistakes in the real world would have been really significant. For instance, when we fired the rat out in front of him. If that were a car running a red light or a vehicle running a stop sign, he would have just plowed right into it. With their tipsy baseline complete, now all they need to do is sober up, lose some sleep, and then do it all again. It's been a long time between naps for our duo. Your driving would wake anybody up. After 30 hours awake, it's time to find out if sleep deprivation makes you a worse driver than alcohol. Turn the sun down. And there's no doubt these two are tired. So Carrie and I have now been awake for over 30 hours. And let me tell you, uh, my heart's racing. Uh, my breathing is irregular. You know that sound that the TV makes when it's just full of snow, that <sighs> I'm feeling sick, so I'm pretty sure my immune system is failing. I haven't started hallucinating yet, but I mean, the day's just begun. Kind of the only thing going through my head right now. I think I might kill a few cones today. Well, there's only one way to find out as our drowsy driver hits the road. As Carrie predicted, she has knocked down cones, but not as many as you'd think. Looking a lot more cautious, though. You see how slow she's going now? Yeah. In contrast to her tipsy test, Carrie is driving very carefully and maintaining the 15 mile per hour speed limit. Yeah, she's kind of like a different driver now. Very different. This time around, she even reacts to and avoids the rocket rat. Whoa. And although she executes another four-point turn, her parallel parking is better. Wow, that was really good. On the obstacle course, Carrie did slightly better driving sleep-deprived than Tipsy. But will she do as well with the monotony test? All right, this is Tipsy versus Tired Monotony Course. Go. A weary Carrie is finding the test such a yawn, it's hard for her to stay awake. Cross. Oh, way over. Uh, Still run a left. And every time she slips towards sleep, well, let's just say the line monitoring device has its work cut out. This has got to be like lap 100. Eventually, Carrie has run the rings, and it's all over for her tired test. That's it for driving tired. Good job, Carrie. I had no idea how difficult it was going to be to drive tired. You know, I knew my reaction time would be a little slow, and it is, but I didn't really factor in things like 
yawning. Yawning squinches up your eyes, your eyes start to water, and out of the corner of my eyes, cones would be moving. I mean, it was, it was a crazy, crazy experience. Crazy. But before we get to her final results, it's Tori's turn. All I want to do is go to bed right now. Compared to his relatively mistake-free run last time, he's making far more errors. Oh! oh no, we hit one of the cones there. That's, That's a confirmed one. hit. Once again, he mows down his rodent distraction. <laughs> and on the slalom, even though he slows right down, there's no tire noise or anything. He's just kind of creeping through the whole thing. His steering suffers. He aces his three-point turn, and then it's on to... Parallel parking without crashing into these sheriff's cars. In contrast to Carrie, Tori was penalized 50 points, more than double his tipsy tally. But will his fatigue affect his driving on the stimulus-free circuit? All right, here we go. In the beginning, Tori is alert and driving well. Science sleeps for no one. Oh, he snuck through there, didn't he? Yeah. That was clean. It was clean. But as he loops the laps over and over, his focus starts to wander. Oops, uh, not it off there for saying. Yep, just like Carrie, oh. Tori's tiny naps are forcing him across the line. And it's a pattern that's repeating. It's the straightaways that give you that bit of time to relax, not worry about a turn, and that's when you doze off. Eventually, after completing 25 laps, he can stop driving in circles. Yeah! Dang, that was rough. It was rough, but how much did the monotony get to our tired twosome? I mean, you guys are plainly very tired right now. From one minute, over the lines before to being to being over five minutes over the line and you being one second over the line to suddenly being over two minutes over the line wow it's a shocking result but it's clear that both tori and carrie made more errors driving tired particularly when it came to monotony carrie was three times worse and tori almost 10. so it's looking like myth confirmed it's confirmed not only is driving tired as bad as driving tipsy it's worse now, being tipsy is borderline illegal. It's incredibly dangerous. What we found is that being tired is even more dangerous than that. So if you have to take a break, if you have to pull over to the side of the road and take a nap, that's what you should do. Because otherwise, you're putting yourself and everyone else at risk. 